Right, Alex. So the goals of this station are to go over some very basic concepts of how to position somebody to open their airway and then ultimately open their airway using various techniques and then ultimately deliver some uh, positive pressure ventilation. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're going to use this airway head to demonstrate a few basic techniques. Uh, we have our patient here who's already on a non-rebreather uh, because they're in need of some supplemental oxygen. Uh, you're going to do a few things. Uh, first of all, we want to position him so that his uh, airway is, is optimized, so the alignment of his airway is right. Um, that's one of the best things that you can do is uh, support his head, bring his head up to uh, an inline position so that the tip of his uh, pinna is in line with his sternal notch or maneuver. So to do that, what I'm going to have you do, just lift his head, we're going to slide a towel roll underneath, and now you can see how he's much more in line. When you ultimately go to laryngoscopy, this will optimize your conditions uh, to intubate. Gotcha. Okay. Then, uh, oftentimes somebody uh, needs an airway because they aren't able to maintain their airway tone. Mm -hmm. uh, their level of consciousness is depressed, they may have an obstruction, they may have a uh, very big tongue, may have some swelling for various reasons. You want to open up that airway a little bit. A couple techniques that you can use. If their C-spine is stable and uninjured, uh, if you're confident of that, uh, you can use a head tilt chin lift technique. Okay? And this is to provide a little bit of an extension and then lift their chin up. This is a little bit difficult to get the, the, the best result. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, most of us prefer to use the jaw thrust technique, uh, especially in the emergency department or in a situation where you don't know if there's the seat spine is stable or not. Uh, so for that technique, first of all, I'll let you try the head tilt chin lift so you get a feel for that. You tilt their head back, put a couple of fingers up uh, under the mental region and pull the chin up. So that gives you a little bit, you get a feel for what that might or might not be able to do. Okay. The idea is to get the soft tissues of the mouth, the tongue, and the hypopharynx up off the retropharyngeal region, open up that airway. Okay. Um, better technique, I think, is to use a jaw thrust. Uh, you can see right off the bat this mannequin is designed to do this. Uh, if you're able to lift their jaw toward the ceiling using a couple of fingers back here, your strongest fingers back behind the angle of the jaw, and lift toward the ceiling. And you can see, I think, just from your angle, mm -hmm. that we're able to get a fair amount of mobility here without moving their head or neck at all. You can really lift the jaw toward the ceiling. And you're lifting all the soft tissues with it and opening up very, very nice. One thing to notice is that you really need to provide some sort of counterforce against that because it's really hard to do this, okay, without some sort of counterforce. So I recommend that you take your two thumbs, put them uh, right here on the zygoma, and provide a counterforce for the lift of the jaw thrust. Okay. Uh, like this. Good. And bring your fingers more around the back, right around the angle of his jaw, and then pull right up toward the ceiling. Nice. And then relax, and then do it again. And how does that feel? Good. Yeah, I like that one. Good. That gives you a lot of a lot of opportunity to really open an airway. We use this sometimes when people are sedated, uh, either a sedation that we do, or because they're sedated for something that they did. Uh, anesthesiologists use this technique very often when people are recovering uh, from a procedure or a surgery. Uh, now, sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you, you need to use some additional uh, tools, some adjuncts, to open an airway. If someone uh, has an intact gag reflex, they won't tolerate an oral airway, okay? Because okay? this is going to go right down back behind their tongue into, into their pharynx and stimulate the gag reflex. A lot of times we'll just use a nasal trumpet or a nasal airway, a nasal okay. pharyngeal airway, or an NPA, a lot of people will call it. It does require some lubrication. They have a little surge of lube available to you. Just lube it up just enough. You don't want it too goopy, but just enough to slide through. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to remove his mask um, down below his nose. And it's a very simple slide. Remember the anatomy, so you want to pretty much go straight back if you can. Okay. And it will slide nice and easily, and it's a very easy technique. You can see why it's called a nasal trumpet. Okay. Now this goes all the way down around uh, his uh, hard and soft palate. Uh, into his uh, pharynx and uh, can provide a route for gases, oxygen primarily, to uh, uh, make its way down into his airway. Okay, so go ahead and I'll take this out for you. And it can go down either side. You'll hear folks talk about which direction the bevel should go. Frankly, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, you can put it down either side. There's a natural curve to this mm -hmm. that follows the natural curve of his anatomy. Okay. Whichever side is bigger that I can tolerate, this is the one that you should use. All right. So just straight back. Straight back. 
should follow the curve naturally with minimal force. Push it in until it seats. Good. And then replace your on a breather. Sometimes that's enough for somebody who, say, is intoxicated, uh, who's, who has sleep apnea maybe, mm -hmm. who keeps on occluding their airway uh, involuntarily, that you just need something to provide some supplemental oxygen open their airway a little bit, mm -hmm. but who has an attack gag reflex and wouldn't use this. Okay. So the next step, and I'll leave the nasal trumpet in there for now, uh, the next step is if they don't have an attack gag reflex and you need to open their airway further, you're doing the jaw thrust, you have the nasal trumpet in. Sometimes you're making your way, or you maybe have already tried some positive pressure thrust with the bag and the mask, and you're unable to move air without an oral airway. Mm -hmm. You can then proceed to putting in an oral airway. Okay. An oral airway, it comes in a mul multiple different um, sizes and shapes. You'll notice that this has some channels down the side that allows the passage of gas uh, around the plastic mm -hmm. and some penetrations. So this allows passage of gas down through the airway from the mouth to get around the tongue and prior airway. Okay. Um, you want to size it appropriately for the patient. Uh, I'm going to show it on this side here. Okay. You want to put the oral airway right at the tip uh, of the pen to the corner of the mouth. Okay. okay. And uh, if it reaches from one point to the other, you have an appropriately sized oral airway. Okay. That's an approximation of what it would take to go from the person's mouth all the way around the back of their tongue. Mm -hmm. So that gives you an appropriate idea of, of the sizing. A couple of ways of putting it in. There's, and everybody has their preference, but I'll tell you, uh, there's there's one way that's taught that I'll, I'll give you my bias on that I don't like very much, and then the one that you do like. So one way that you'll see taught is to open up somebody's mouth, and you never want to put your fingers inside somebody's mouth who's awake. They will bite, <laughs> they will hurt you. So don't do that, okay? If he's not awake, then it's okay to do this and open up his airway a little bit, okay? If they are a little bit awake, okay, you may want to use a tongue blade or some other method. Generally, if they're able to tolerate an oral airway, they're not awake. Um, so you're generally okay doing this. One technique that I've seen you use and is taught often is to put it in so it curves toward their palate and then rotate it around okay. until it fits in. Okay. This has the disadvantage, unfortunately, you have to rotate through a jaw that might be clenched mm -hmm. and grinding against the teeth. It also can grind against the palate. Um, and I think cause a little bit of trauma, but it's a technique that's taught and you know it, it may have its place in some situations. What I found a little bit more useful is that you simply, again, if they're not awake and not going to bite you, open up their jaw and then simply feed it in like this, right around the back of the tongue, mm -hmm. boom, and you're in. Okay. Alternatively, if you need to get the tongue out of the way and you can't or don't want to get your finger further in just for your safety, you can use a tongue blade here, push the tongue out of the way with that, and then just simply feed it around the tongue blade. So I'm going to have you try a couple of each one of those two. Uh -huh. So the first one you said, open the mouth, mm -hmm. put it in facing up, mm -hmm. and then as I go in, it's twisted. Rotate it into place. Okay. Right. Um, then I'll try the one that you like. Open the mouth more, and I'll put that back around the back of the tongue, and then that's easy. Yeah, exactly. And then you can try, try it with the tongue blade as well, just to get a feel for what that's like. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that you did that I didn't point out at first, but uh -huh. I like that you did, so I'm going to point this out, is that you not only open his mouth with your thumb, but you also lift it up a little bit. And I saw that just a little, you know, just from this side, mm -hmm. and I like that technique. Oftentimes, you take, you know, grab uh, the teeth, mandibular teeth, lift up a little bit, and that'll also pull the tongue off the back of the airway as well, and it makes it a little bit easier to feed that in. Cool. Okay. So that was nicely done. So now at this point, this is an airway that's about as open as you can get it, uh -huh. short of doing an intubation. <laughs> okay. yeah. You got you know, may still have the jaw thrust, although the oral airways helped you with most of that. You've got the nasal trumpet. Now at this stage, frankly, because you've done this, you're already going to be ready for positive pressure ventilation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so very often, once you're at an oral airway, you're no longer worried about this method of a gas delivery. You're worried about this method of mm -hmm. gas delivery. We're going to hook up our ambu bag. Make sure you turn on the oxygen source. Believe it or not, it's an important step to remember. <laughs> it's not automatic. Okay. Now, when using an ambu bag and a mask, first thing you recognize is that you need to size your mask appropriately. Okay. They come in all an array of sizes based on age, basically from premature infant all the way up through a large adult. Okay. The optimal positioning for your mask should go over the bridge of the nose and right over the mental region. Okay. Between the lip and the chin. Okay. Create a nice seal all the way around, 
you want all of your ventilatory effort to go to where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. You don't want it out the side. Right. There's some tips and tricks that will, you know, that, that uh, we can address in, in future sessions that'll help you create the best seal. But I'm going to give you some of the basic techniques here. Okay. Okay. So first thing you want to do is create the good seal with the mat. You hook up your ambu here. The best way to do this is a two-person technique. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed the bag to you. Okay. And as you're ventilating, I'm going to describe a couple things that I'm doing to create a good seal. So we've sized our mask appropriately. And then a two-handed technique to create the seal gives us our best result. I'm going to put my two thumbs up here, my two fingers down here, and create sort of a C technique. And I'm going to take two fingers on each side, just like we did the jaw thrust earlier, and pull up into the mask and pull my fingers down into the space. Now what I've done is I've created a seal and I'm purposely moving around a little bit to show you that I've, I'm basically one with his face now. I've created the seal, all right? I don't feel any gases escaping outside. You can see his lungs expanding, and that's the true measure of whether this is working or not. What you want is to be able to see chest rise and to hear breath sounds and to see some improvement, hopefully, in your oxygenation ventilation measurements as you're doing this. Uh, so that'll help you assess whether you're doing this effectively. A couple other techniques that you may see taught. People will take the index in their middle finger and use the thumbs down technique and point toward the foot of the patient and create a seal like that. And that's perfectly fine too. I found that different operators like different techniques. And as long as you've achieved the goal of creating a seal all the way around with two hands, I think it's effective. A lot of anesthesiologists, because they have a slightly different configuration of the mask, will put two thumbs up here and grab and create a seal like this. So either way, your thumbs are up here, you've got a C and a double E down there. Or you've got your thumbs down technique and you're creating it like this. One way or the other, you've got to be assured that you have a good seal right. Be cognizant of their eyes. You want their eyes closed. In the OR, you'll see the anesthesiologist take their eyes closed. Oftentimes they don't have the luxury of that time, but you want to be careful to not make sure this mask doesn't slide up over their eyes and you're not running around on their eyes. And that your hands as they come across are protecting their eyes as well. Okay? So I'm going to switch roles with you yep. and swing the bag around here. First of all, check to see if the mask is the proper size. Over the bridge in the nose, the mantle area looks pretty good. Okay, good. I'm going to provide some breaths. You can go ahead and create a seal. So C and then hold the jaw with my middle yep. and Reach your fingers around back as far as they'll go around the angle of the jaw. Okay. Good. Put your yeah. fingers up there and your thumbs up here. Yeah. This is a nice bridge up here, this flat part of this particular manufacturer. Mm -hmm. You can put your th thumbs to rest upon. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly like okay. that. Anyway, okay. you aren't stretching quite as much. Uh -huh. Okay. And then you're putting equal pressure all the way around. And you've got a good seal. And we're moving the air. We're watching chest rise. Mm -hmm. We're listening for breath sounds. We're watching this pulse oximeter. We may have an end tidal CO2 detector here to get an idea of how well we're ventilating and if we're getting a CO2 return. Okay. Um, then try a couple different techniques with your thumbs down. Good. How does that feel? I like that one. one. It's a little more comfortable. Okay. Good. Now try the other one with just your thumbs pointed up basically to the center of this. Uh, like oh, this. like yeah, the anesthesia. Yeah, it's that way. And I'll see how that feels. Taking all your fingers with oh, okay. and just pushing down like that. I like that. I wonder if any air escapes now. Yeah, no, no air escaping now. Cool. Good. So I'm fine. I think most of us are fine as long as you create that seal on uh -huh. one of these techniques. The key, I think, is that it's a two person, right. two handed seal technique. Mm -hmm. Gone, I think, are the days, here, let me slide in and I'll show yeah. you. I think gone are the days where we're expecting people to do the CE technique uh -huh. for a very long period of time. It may work if it's all you got, mm -hmm. okay? But what happens over time is this hand gets really fatigued and this mask tends to do this okay. and you lose your seal, okay? So definitely better to do it for some mm -hmm. two handed technique. Okay. Awesome. All right. So those are the basics of opening an airway, positioning properly, using a NPA and an OPA in the correct patient creating a seal, sizing the mask appropriately, and providing positive pressure ventilation. Awesome. Thank you. Very good. Nice job.